I am Denise Machado and uh, we are at Impulse Stand Vienna 2014. <laughs> Great. Uh, tell us what, what are you doing here, or what brought you here? Well, I, I'm presenting, I was presenting my work, Black Cats Can See in the Dark But Are Not Seen, in this attention series that uh, Impulse Stand has for some time. Mm -hmm. And uh, simultaneously, I, I, I will be in residency for my next project that is called Cyborg Sunday. It, it, what? Tell me the name again? Cyborg Sunday. <laughs> Great. And uh, could you tell us a little bit more about, you know, your piece or if you can frame a little bit your, your research or your work? Well, Black Cats is a piece that I did uh, through... I was working and not working through three years and it started with a kind of a travel diary that I, that I was working on when I left Portugal. Mm -hmm. I live in, in Sweden now and... <clears throat> the, um, the piece develops from there and develops around questions of nomadism and, and develops around that on a very abstract way mm -hmm. and basically in relation with several materials that are constantly mutating where it's a piece where things are kind of constantly mutating into other things mm. or bodies are kind of balancing into its own figurativity and moments where the bodies transform into something else. Yeah, yeah. Like and also when I, I saw it, I, I kind of was able to see the exploration in perhaps in relationship with what we conceive homes or uh, you know habitats and how is constructing and being destroyed at the same time. Yeah, I think I think the the piece has this relation with with territory or with the mm. identification. And with with precarious territories, or mm. there was something that I was working a lot with mm. in the beginning of the process that had to do with this notion that if when you if when you live in a house, if you place photos in your walls or mm. bibelots in your shelf or I don't know whatever to reflect your identity or to map yourself mm -hmm. somehow. What happens in your in a nomadic process? How do you how do you map your identity somehow? Or how do you create mechanisms that reflect you? Mm -hmm. And then you know, like we, we wonder, it's like how much is that? Let's say the nature of creating territory as you know part of being humans or animals, mm -hmm. you know, the biological. And how much is then? Uh, it's like my question because I go through that perhaps like many artists is. How can how much can we deconstruct? You know, how much can we actually live healthy within that uh, glamorized mobility? You know, but at the same time, it's like how much actually how much can, how much can we leave that necessity of 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 creating territory? Yeah, I think it's um, it's not absence. Uh, it's not absence of problematics. The yeah. this glamorous uh, yeah. nomadism. Of the artists, but um, I don't know. I think that what I what what I was working a lot at that time, or what I was dealing with, mm -hmm. was somehow that uh, for me the space of the stage mm. became as 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 less grounded I was in one place, more the space of the stage become this this grounded space mm -hmm. as this kind of mechanism that I would re 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 find again and again uh, in, in different places and, and I think that's what the piece works, the piece mm. works, the piece reflects on these uh, nomadism questions and not on these temporary structures, mm. not on, on talking about life or mm. uh, mimetizing life mm -hmm. or representing life but uh, approaching it through the very mechanism of mm -hmm. the stage and of the scene. Yeah. And also, I, I found this uh, interesting and beautiful reference to notions of friendship and content and contact, and we will see you again. You know, and that, yeah. uh, you know, that kind of reference to time, that not the temporality of, of relationships, or something that kind of was woven yeah. uh, in it. 
I think the piece is full of this. Uh, so the piece has this text that mm -hmm. uh, David is reading from the beginning till the end. That yeah. is kind of uh, travel diary, and there is all these different uh, relationships that are all the time popping up mm -hmm. um, since very circumstantial persons that mm -hmm. uh, me that I'm that I met in the street or things like that till mm. till letters that are written to someone to the same person or to the same persons from the beginning till the end of the of the performance so there is this there is all this mapping of the mm. of, uh, of relations and also it, i think it becomes very evident that these relations are also one of these mechanisms of reflection of the self somehow or yeah. mapping of the self yeah because then the the territory is not just space yeah. you know it's, it's literally a, a cognitive narrative or something like that you know that I think what 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 is for me important on, on the piece is that this territory um, appears not so much through the things or even mm -hmm. through the people, but through the mechanisms. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and what 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 brings for me interesting questions in relation with technique or mm -hmm. with uh, uh, not in the sense of a, of an education technique mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. like that, but on the sense of 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 a very large understanding of what can be a practice. Mm -hmm. or kind of the methods or something. Yeah. Because, in a, you know, the, the notion of constructions and deconstruction is all the time there as a trope, you know, that, yeah. that is literally... Uh, and then you challenge the patience, you know, of, of us as an audience. It's like, okay, what, what is happening now? It's going to paint, and it's going to paint the whole thing. You know, and then, okay, you're creating a surface. And so it has these layers, for me, of, 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 of then what what is a solo, you know, what is a dance, and, yeah. and finding the space for the dance was, was really interesting for me. Too. I think there is a negotiation in between yeah. what is uh, in between times or in, where in certain points I don't negotiate with the time of the performance, but in other points I kind of compensate it. So there is this scene where I paint this wall for yeah. 15 minutes, but then at the same time you have you have all this uh, this action passes to a kind of second level of the performance and you have all these conversations that happen in mm -hmm. different places um, in between me and David that is there mm -hmm. so suddenly is as if uh, because there is something quite specific on the time of this action or on the time of all the actions in fact but uh, this when, when these actions are too demanding, I try to kind of pass them to a second uh, layer so that yeah. you are occupied with something else yeah. till you perceive that this action that, was, that seemed so demanding already passed, in fact. Yeah, and that's something that I felt is a little bit of, perhaps it's part of the politics of your pieces, is, uh, you know, I work in this other extreme, also trying to understand the politics of digital media. And there is this, everything is created with some kind of analogical intention. Yeah. Uh, or, or certain kind of scrap materials. Or, so there is something about perhaps preferring the precariousness or the sustainability <laughs> of the practice. I think there was, yeah, there was, there was something that we talked a lot and that was quite important for me. And on this idea of, uh, I think we, there is a lot to, uh, I don't think that the nomadism or the, I'm not talking about globality on this performance or mm. about uh, uh, the glo globality. about being everywhere. Yeah. I'm talking about nomadic travel, but also about a trial to really be in the, in the, mm -hmm. in the space that we are. Mm. And I think that's what, what made us uh, go so analog in a way. Mm. Okay. And uh, how did and on, you... Mm -hmm. And then sometimes also, I think the piece deals a lot with notions of garbage, or uh -huh. which is everything on the performance is quite uh, fragile and quite... Uh, I think something that I was very busy in the beginning was like... Uh, working with materials that have a very low value uh -huh. or that are, that are given very low value and put them on, on a place of, and give value to them mm -hmm. somehow. So there is this huge wall that is made of cardboard, cardboard box yeah. that is collected on supermarkets basically. Mm -hmm. And that has, but then has a very delicate and very structured... Yeah, structurally it's really strong. Yeah. Into, ...in a way that it, in the middle of the performance it can stand alone. So there is this notion of of investing and investing a long time 
into things that are that are considered garbage or that are mm -hmm. considered very non-valuable materials. Mm -hmm. And the same with like uh, I use a lot of slide projectors, mm -hmm. slide projectors in all my pieces, and it's also because of that because they are. I don't know how it's here, but in Portugal mm -hmm. you enter. There is all these shops that sell mm -hmm. like garbage from other people for very cheap, and in all of them there is always a pile of slide projectors. Yeah, yeah. The so carousel ones, the yeah, carousels, and the all the ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. And somehow they come to my pieces a lot of times, and also because of that, I think. Yeah. This idea of technology, but also of a uh, of getting back. I think it's a bit of questioning this very present idea of um, of temporary technologies that we mm -hmm. live in as well. Yeah, like the obsolescence and, and yeah. you know, like, and I think that there is also... A, a I, think, mm -hmm. I think I also approach it more on the perspective of garbage than on the perspective mm -hmm. of, of technology. I think yeah, my yeah. question is more ecological, maybe. Yeah, yeah like, I, I mean, the text, I noticed, you know, like, a little bit of the, how you approach that. And how then do you, you know, because at the same time, I see the, the artist, you as an artist that has a craft that goes beyond the dance or whatever traditionally we call dance, Perhaps, where, perhaps you were building those boxes. Were you yeah. also participating in that or that? Or yeah, that? Sure. yeah. The, there is this very important thing on the performance that has to do with uh, gestures and with uh, almost uh, diff different kind of movement so, mm -hmm. and different scales of movement as well. So you have this very big movement that, that this diary documents that is mm -hmm. a one year travel. Yeah. And then you have a uh, one day movement that is this building of this so this wall gets destroyed every day so every day mm -hmm. that we have a performance in the morning we get together to build this wall for mm -hmm. some hours and then the wall stays drying there till the beginning of the performance yeah. and then it is manipulated and transformed during the performance and ends being destroyed during the performance so this is a kind of one, d one day movement that allows mm -hmm. the performance to happen and then you have all these small movements that are sl smaller than the, the, the length of the performance. Yeah. And I think the important thing here is that uh, more, than, more than this performance uh, enacting on a classical theatrical way this, mm -hmm. this diary that is there, this performance uh, enacts equivalence of that. So the, the actions that we do, we take care mm -hmm. that we that we produce in the performance they are not representations of this diary. This yeah. diary happened and it's yeah. it's hap it's done. Yeah. Uh, what we do is 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 actions that allow allow us to create a, a landscape that is more a, a kind of equivalent of the, of the of this narrative that is going on, yeah. um, or that that kind of. Um, creates things that are that have a connection with this thing that already happened but they never represent it somehow. Yeah. Yeah, and what is so you know, it's kind of like the your actions don't begin and start just on stage. You know, yeah. that's this kind of woven in the fabric of of life. And at the same time it's interesting the notion of practice how I think enters in a different way. Yeah. Or in a way that is very broad. That is not just about the practice of my body and yeah, trying yeah. to prepare for the performance. Is literally the building and constructing and but I making. think it, it exists also because the performance puts kind of side by side uh, different uh, levels of ab abstraction of action. Mm -hmm. So you have actions that are very evident, like mm -hmm. painting a wall from the beginning till the yeah. end, and you have other actions that are. Uh, that some people say, "Oh, this is the dance moment." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. Yeah. Uh, I try to put all these these uh, unities of movement side by side and to work at them on on similar paradigms so to mm -hmm. to create criteria for all of them to or to give them the same importance somehow. yeah like that uh, I also felt like there was this kind of uh, debunking our, our, our expectation okay there's come the solo and you took off the light <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. And, uh, and that's, you know, how, how, then how do you see now, this is just to finish, the, the role of, you know, whatever we know dance is or becoming and it's transform it, transforming with the, your contemporary practice, how, how do you see it now? How, how is my practice? Yeah, in a way, you know, because then, then your 
we can say that your beginning point of start doing this kind of work it has been dance and perhaps choreography. Yeah, it was. I had a very classical education on dance uh -huh. before. Uh, I don't know. Lots of things happened. I think I, I had a very classical education in ballet and contemporary dance, and at a certain point, I wanted to to create something that was more specific, and I was very busy on creating a way to develop my practice that was would be very specific. And mm -hmm. then I started to search for more other educations. I studied a bit of visual arts, mm -hmm. and uh, now I have been doing this master in choreography again with the Yefta and Fred. But um, I think this is, there is something very strong that I took from this experience with visual arts that has to do with the way that artists work in the studio. Mm. So I don't... There is a very continuous practice, I think, mm -hmm. that is a very continuous writing practice and also uh, I, sometimes I just, outside of any project, I start developing small experiences or small mm -hmm. units of movement or, mm -hmm. or not, or engaging on things, basically. Uh, and then these things that are kind of hanging around in my house and my studio, uh, they they just suddenly I say, okay, this with this and with this, this is a starting point of something, or there is a some kind of dramaturgical unit that comes together here. And then yes, I invest in a more, in a more classical project uh, thing of going to a studio and uh, putting things together. Mm -hmm. But in fact, this, this piece that I presented here, Black Cats, it was created, I got a, a grant from Portugal to work abroad. Mm. And I just rented a room, we rented two rooms in, a, in an apartment in, in Berlin. And I, I went there with David and George that are on stage with me in the piece. And we were working in, our, in my room, basically. <laughs> so <laughs> there is this very, I think, there is this very... It's not so much about, uh, about sometimes creating... Some people see a lot of bringing life into art in my mm. project, but mm. it's not... I think the relation is not exactly that, it's that the project starts being created in, inside of life more. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, let's continue the conversation. Thanks. Thank you.